Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over graph representation with adjacency matrices. This is some real nifty stuff because it lets us take a beautifully drawn graph like this and turn it into a soulless square with zeros and ones. But all joking aside, adjacency matrices can certainly be useful, and we'll introduce them by creating one for this graph G. An adjacency matrix has one row and one column for each vertex in the graph that it represents, so our matrix will be a 4x4 four four matrix. Now let me draw for you the best matrix that my power enables me to. It's got to have four rows, bring the bottom out, something like that. Go over here to draw the other side, make sure we keep our lines nice and straight. We got four rows, bring it to the bottom, bring it over like that, bam. All right, now let's label the rows with our vertex labels, A, B, C, and D. Same thing with the columns. We have A, B, C, and D and we'll call this adjacency matrix A. Adjacency matrices are defined like this. The entry in the ith row and jth column is equal to one if ij is an element of the edge set of the graph G, the graph that the adjacency matrix represents. And the entry in the ith row and jth column is equal to zero otherwise. So the matrix is entirely comprised of zeros and ones. If the vertex represented by the ith row is adjacent to the vertex represented by the jth column, then that entry is equal to one. Otherwise, it's equal to zero. So let's go through and fill in this adjacency matrix. First, we have row A, column A, which is going to be zero because A is not adjacent to itself. Then row A, column B, that's going to be a one because we see that A is adjacent to B in the graph G. Then row A, column C, that's going to be a one for the same reason, A is adjacent to C in graph G. And then we have row A, column D, that is going to be a zero, because of course A is not adjacent to D in graph G. Now we'll fill in the rest a little quicker. B is adjacent to A, so this is one. B is not adjacent to itself, this is zero. B is not adjacent to C, this is zero. B is adjacent to D, so this is one. C is adjacent to A, so this is one. C is not adjacent to B, so this is zero. C is not adjacent to itself, so this is zero. C is adjacent to D, so this is one. D is not adjacent to A, so this is zero. D is adjacent to B, so this is one. D is adjacent to C, so this is one. And D is not adjacent to itself, so this is zero. So now we have finished filling out our adjacency matrix for G, and it completely describes G. It tells us all of the vertices of G, and it tells us all of the edges of G. A couple neat things to notice here. If you add up all the entries in a row, you'll get the degree of the vertex that row represents. Same thing with the columns. If you add up all the entries in a column, you'll get the degree of that vertex represented by the column. Adding up the entries in this first row gives us zero plus one plus one plus zero, which is two, and of course the degree of the vertex A is two. Additionally, since the graph G is a simple graph, you'll notice that the diagonal contains only zeros because a vertex cannot be adjacent to itself in a simple graph. But of course, our diagonal would not consist of only zeros if we had mixed up the order of our rows and columns. For example, if we made the first column represent B, then this entry here would have been a one. Another interesting thing to notice about this matrix is that it is symmetric. And that's because it represents an undirected graph. So you can see that this matrix is indeed symmetric. And when we're talking about symmetric matrices, we mean that it's symmetric across the diagonal. So since G is an undirected graph, vertex A being adjacent to vertex B means that vertex B is also adjacent to vertex A. And that's why we get this symmetry in its adjacency matrix. Also notice how we could reconstruct G entirely from this matrix. We could see that it has four vertices, A, B, C, and D, from looking at the rows or the columns. And then looking here, we'd see there's an edge joining A to B. Looking here, we'd see there's an edge joining A to C, and so on. We could recreate the graph completely just from this matrix which I think is really cool. So I hope this video helped you understand what adjacency matrices are and how to create them. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.